All right, welcome to another one of my demonstrations on how to make another revolve. So we're going to re revolve this pulley. So what you see here is a drawing of this pulley, and we did a full section along the vertical axis. So that means we cut this pulley in half, threw this right half away, and what we're left with <clears throat> over here on the side is what you would see if you were looking at this pulley from the side. So what we're going to do is we're going to sketch half of this. So we're going to sketch this top half and then we're going to revolve it. And we only sketch what our saw blade actually would have touched. So as we cut this through, anything that our cutting tool actually touched is what we're gonna sketch. So this is what that would look like. So in SolidWorks, go ahead and click on your new sheet of paper, double click on part, and that will open that up. So again, our revolve process, we set the modeling units first, then draw a new sketch and choose which planar face to create the sketch on. So I'm going to set my units. This does happen to be in millimeters. So I'll click where it says IPS and select MMGS. Then click on the sketch tab on the command manager, click on my sketch icon. And this one again, this one's gonna be on the front plane. So I'll click on front plane and then I can start creating my sketch. So since there's a hole in the middle of this, let me get back to my drawing. Since there's a hole in the middle of this, I'm going to put a center line in there and I'm going to use that as my axis of revolution. And so I'm going to sketch just this part up here at the top. So I'm going to start with that center line. So I'll click the little line next to my, or the little arrow next to my line command, select center line. And I just want a center line that's going to go through this origin. So something like that will work. I'll do that, hit escape to get out of my center line command. Now I can go to my line command and I can start drawing this in. So I'm just going to come some distance up here above my origin. And I'm going to click a point, just draw a horizontal line back to the origin. So I'll click there, hit escape to get out of my line command. I'm going to click on line again. Come on over here to this uh, left end point of that line I just drew. So I'll click there. I need a little vertical line going up, and then I need a line kind of angling. So I'll do something like this. Then come straight up, straight back to the left, and I just want it to be somewhere in there. Come up a little bit, then come on back to where I started from. So we're just gonna sketch this out pretty rough. We're gonna start throwing some dimensions on here. And then what I plan on doing is mirroring this sketch to get the other half of this, okay? So I've got that. Everything looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and add another center line in here. And that center line, I want to go right through those two points. So right now, just check your relations. The center line we just added, it should be vertical. All these lines should be either horizontal or vertical. The only one that shouldn't have a relation is this angled line. And your center line, it should be horizontal as well. Okay, so then the only other relation is I wanna line my center line up with this origin. So I'll select my origin, hold down control, select my center line, Oh, I don't want to do that. I'm going to hit escape there. Hit escape a few times so nothing's selected, no commands are running. Select your origin and then just select the end point of that line and line those two up, make them vertical. All right, now let's start throwing some dimensions on this thing. So click on smart dimension. So the first dimension, I want to dimension from this bottom horizontal line to this center line. So when I do that, I get basically what would be the radius. I want the diameter dimension. So if I just drag my cursor past the center line, now I get diameter. So I can go ahead and click there. And this is a diameter of 20. I'll type 20 and hit enter. Now the next thing I'm going to go from this endpoint. So I'll click on the endpoint. And since my center line was still selected, I automatically get my diameter dimension when I cross over to the bottom of that. So I'll click there. This is going to be 24. And then it looks like the only other one I have 
is this top one. So I'll click on my top horizontal line. And again, it automatically goes ahead and gives me my diameter. So I'll click there, and this is going to be an 80. All right, so then at that point, I can go ahead and hit escape a couple times. Hit escape a few times, that way no commands are running, nothing is selected. Now I can add some more dimensions. So another dimension I need on here is the length of this vertical line is a four. So I'll click on that line, pull off to the left, click again, make that a four. And then the angle created on this line is eight degrees. So I'll select my angled line. I'll select this horizontal line, come on off, off over to the side here, click there and make that eight degrees. All right, so this is looking pretty good. I'm gonna need a dimension between this vertical line and this center line. And so again, when I cross over that center line, it gives me basically what would be the diameter dimension. So I want this thing to be five, right there. I want between that vertical line on the top, I want that to be 29. And again, it's, it's not necessarily a diameter dimension, but overall I want it to be 29. So I'll put that on there. And then overall down here to this vertical line, I want that to be 40. So I'll click to place that and make that 40. And then when I've got that, now it's all fully defined. So I'm going to go ahead and hit escape a couple times. And you'll notice on center lines, you don't have to fully define center lines. Uh, so I don't have to give this center line a length since it's ignored when revolves are made. So now I'm ready to mirror this. So I can do mirror entities. And for entities to mirror, I'm just going to go through here and start selecting each one of these lines that I created. Right there, I want to mirror all those. I'll click in the box down here for the mirror about. I'm going to mirror it about this center line. It gives me a preview to the other side. Make sure that the box for copy is checked. And then hit your green check mark. And now we're going to revolve this. So on back to my steps. So I started a new sketch. So I draw the sketch using lines, circles, rectangles, etc. So we just did that. If necessary, add a center line for the axis of revolution. You only need a center line if there's going to be a hole in the middle of your part. Otherwise, you don't need a center line. You can put one in there so that you can get these diameter dimensions like this but it doesn't, it's not actually necessary unless you have a hole in there. So I've got my axis in there. So step five, click on revolve boss base to create the revolve, set my re re revolution properties and click the green check mark. So in here, I'll click on features, click on revolve boss base. So my axis of revolution is highlighted. I'll click on this first center line that I created. It gives me a preview. Preview looks good. I'll go ahead and hit my green check mark. So there's my pulley. The only thing that's left to do on my pulley is uh, I chose to leave these fillets off of my sketch. So I need to go ahead and add those in there. So to add those in there, it's going to be on this face. So I'll select fillet. It's a two millimeter fillet, so I'll type two and hit enter. And items to fillet, I'll select that face and then orbit around to the back side, select that same face. That looks good, hit my green check mark. And now if I want to check this and see if it does really look like what my drawing looks like, is I'll go ahead and do a section view. So I've got my section view tool right here, so I'll click on that. It already selected my front plane, and that's the plane I want, so I'll hit my green check mark. And then if I just move to a front view, then that should match my drawing. So let me pull those up side by side.
and you can compare those profiles. So my profile that I have here to this profile, they look pretty close. So that looks good. So that's all there is to doing to uh, create revolves in SolidWorks. To shut this section tool off, you just click on this icon again and it'll toggle it off. So again, just like the last one, just go ahead and do a screenshot of this, turn it in so I know that you were able to complete it. And I look forward to talking to you when I get back. Thanks for listening and see you soon.